that's probably the best evidence. Curator Waylon Bishop showed me photographs someone brought in that now belong to the Oak Fusky County Historical Society. He wanted to get rid of them. He, it bothered him mm. that he had them. I see. The photos are from 1911. It is graphic. They show a woman and boy dead, hanging from a bridge, ropes tied around their necks, mouths gagged, the boy's hands bound. A crowd of people, even children, stand around gawking. To me, that's so hard to understand. I it. I, I, that's I'm the same way. A white mob lynched the black woman and her 12-year-old son in the middle of the night. The local newspaper said the next morning a boy discovered the ghastly spectacle gently swaying in the wind when he was taking his cow to water. It's a story Luke Bennett first heard from his grandparents. It was not something that I was probably supposed to hear. Luke says his family on his mother's side, like his uncle Wayland, grew up in Okima. When Luke was helping Wayland go through photos, they came across these. For me and Wayland, that's where it started. Uh, we wanted to know what really happened. Retired Langston professor Benjamin Bates first saw this photo as a 19-year-old student at Yale University. The hanging from the bridge with the people lined up above her. I saw that when I was in college and it's been sort of just living with me ever since. It's hard to look at it. It stuck with me for all those years for that reason. Now Benjamin's teamed up with Wayland and Luke to get to the truth. Together they've pieced together the story as best they can from photos, newspaper articles, and oral history. The trio fighting a century plus of silence. It was hush hush. Uh, let it lie would be, you know, something that you would hear repeated if you were asking questions about this. You just need to let this lie. Start from the beginning. In 1911, what happened? All right, so in 1911, uh, Austin Nelson, Laura's husband, apparently stole a cow to feed his family. Uh, there's a posse uh, that got put together. Sheriff Lo Loney was the, the one that got the warrant to arrest. So they went to the farm. Now they're going to go in and collect, I guess, the meat from the cabin. And there's rumors that there's a rifle in there. They wanted to come in, search a house, take the weapons. Well, the, uh, the boy supposedly went in the bedroom and got another uh, rifle and come out. Laura, the mother, sees the son going for the gun, and she goes for the gun. Um, in the struggle, the gun goes off. The gun goes off. It grazes one of the uh, posse member's legs, goes into Sheriff's uh, thigh, goes up. He bleeds out almost instantly, right? He's dead. It's unclear whether the shooting was intentional or not. We've assessed that it was, it was probably a, an accidental shooting but we can't know for sure. The father's court case was heard and he was convicted and he was sent off to prison. He's in McAllister prison within three weeks. You know, he pleads guilty and he's done. Laura and her son were not arrested until the next day. They're accused of murder. Laura Nelson and her 12-year-old son Lawrence were in the Okima jail awaiting trial. And they used the woman sheriff and point a gun. This gun. photo shows a reenactment of what the jailer claimed happened. A mob showed up, tied the jailer up. He made a big story about how well they tied him up. The newspaper article says a party of men seized him, bound him, and pointed a pistol at him. Who did this? That's the mystery. Uh, they always say it was a mob of 40. Who do you think this mob was? I would say it's probably the local clan. This article says the mob took Laura and Lawrence and swung them from the bridge across the North Canadian River. The bridge was halfway between Okima, a mostly white town, and Boley, a mostly black town. Laura and Lawrence's bodies both were hanging, facing toward Boley. To suggest to the people of Boley that Okima is not your town. And I guess that's why they took photos. Yeah. Is basically because, like, yes. hey, this is a warning. This is, yes, this is for, for future black people who might come through here. This is, this is how we treat black people. The photographer who captured these photos turned them into postcards to sell. That's a postcard. Yeah, there's four postcards. They profited off of this thing. They, you know, they, they promoted Okima by lynching this woman. They had a grand jury afterwards of peers of the town that investigated it and they couldn't find anything. They talked to all the witnesses or people that, that might have known. Nobody knew, uh, could give any names. The judge just uh, released them, you know, they did their investigation and dropped the case. All we know about her now is that she's hanging from that bridge. That's all we know about her. I think she deserves better than that. Up next, 
the hunt to find Laura and her son's unmarked graves. Chances are this is right where she is. Plus, some accounts suggest there's a bigger mystery to uncover. There's always just been this mystery about this baby and what happened to the baby. My grandmother always mentioned the legend of how there's a baby. I would put that in the category of things that just gnaw at people. Just gnaw at you, you know, what about the baby? Stay with us.